Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, everyone's well today. I'm really happy to be back with you all again. Um, I wanted to share a little bit. Um, some of you uh, may know that I got to meet last time. I'm serving at a university uh, in North Carolina. And, a, you know, just across the board, we see that there's a decline with people uh, being involved with religion in general. Uh, a lot of people, they consider themselves, you know, spiritual, not religious, or that they can be good without God. And a lot of the morals that people are wrestling with, uh, we see really the latest self-help book may be replacing these ancient scriptures that we may be accustomed to interacting with. And there are some really beautiful teachings, ideas in our tradition that offer a, a very holistic uh, approach to many topics that people are interested in. Uh, but often it, it seems like leadership in, in our communities and in various communities, especially with the Muslims, uh, memorize certain things, but can't always operationalize the teachings to promote happiness and well-being to help people navigate their lives. I say especially in Islam because we are, we're really good at, and I think unique that we have texts that are preserved and that we still have them intact, but we don't always know how to use them to help people. And one of my favorite people in the world, Dr. Sherman Jackson, uh, has this famous quote, if you're familiar with him, the greatest threat to religion in any society is not persecution, but rather apathy born of irrelevance. So how do we use this information to help us navigate our lives? And of course, part of navigating this life is to make it to the next life in one piece, so to speak, to please God, but we also want to be of service to humanity. So religious, religious um, literacy is low, but there's a huge amount of information uh, that people have access to on the internet and so on and so forth. And it could just take a lifetime just sorting through all the websites, all the books, or the articles that we now have access to. So I wanted to just briefly look at the teachings from a 13th century scholar, Imam Abu Abbas al-Mursi. He lived in Andalusia in Egypt. And this Imam, uh, he summarized all of life's possibilities into four scenarios. So that's why I thought about talking about the four states, the four states that we can find ourselves in and what's a helpful response. So one, you can be in a state of obedience to God. You can be in a state of disobedience to God. You can be in a state of ease or you could be in a state of hardship. And an important point to bring in here now is when we think about Tawheed, when we're talking about this kind of discussion, Tawheed is not just an idea that God is one, but we're talking about an awareness that God's in control of everything at all times. And we, we strive, we work on more and more putting our trust in God because God's in control of everything. And in a sense, some of the situations we find ourselves in that are challenging, um, it always really speaks to how we view God. If God's in ultimate control, God's aware, God allowed us to be in these situations. And the ask of us is that we respond in an appropriate way. So the situation is not always the test, but how we use our free will to respond to these tests. That's where, that's where it, uh, the rubber hits the road. So again, the Imam, he summarized all of life's possibilities into four scenarios. So no matter what you're going through, 
a million or billion different different states that a human being can find themselves in, you can really boil it down to one of these four states. You're in a state of obedience to God. You're in a state of disobedience to God. You're in a state of ease or you're in a state of hardship. And so with each of these four states, there's appropriate responses to help us navigate skillfully. So if we find ourselves that we are being obedient to God, we want to be aware that God has really favored us, that this is that we've been guided to God. And if we're blessed to be people that have submitted to God, that we're obeying God, we don't want to get it twisted in thinking it's because we're so smart or so cute or whatever. Uh, you know, the big danger of religion is religiosity. Uh, Muhammad the prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him, said, I don't fear that you'll worship the sun and the moon, and the stars and the moon, rather, but I fear that you'll worship other than God through showing off. And he also said, peace be upon him, what I fear most for my community is doing things for other than the sake of God. This is a story you may have heard in different versions, but there's uh, a few people are in the masjid. There's an older person that everyone sees as being very pious, and he's doing these night prayers, and they're whispering about this person, saying that he's always giving charity, he's always praying, uh, he's just a beautiful person, and they're saying that they really want to be like this person. And as they're leaving, this, this old person says, and don't forget about all the fasting that I do. You, you forgot to mention that. So again, there's so many traps to navigating our egos that if we are being obedient to God, we want to realize it's, it is a gift from God. It's really a huge gift, a huge blessing from God. And we should be mindful of that. If we're disobedient to God, then what's asked of us is to, to make toba. We want to turn back. We want to try to get back on track. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Whoever repents after their wrongdoing and mends their ways, God will surely turn to them in forgiveness. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said, the, the repentant one is God's beloved. And the one who repents from a sin is like one who has no sin. So this is really a satanic trick for us to give up on ourselves. You know, we're, we're human beings. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall. The thing to do when you fall is immediately start looking up. Start thinking about how you can turn back. Because Toba, you know, for us, this is really about turning. This is about trying to, we, we've got off track. We've missed the mark. We want to recalibrate and we want to try it again and have mercy toward ourselves as well. As well, there's a very common hadith that speaks about showing mercy to those on earth so that the one in the heavens will show mercy to you. And sometimes we forget that we're on earth as well. So we may, we may make progress as far as being merciful to other people while forgetting that we're a human being. We, if we were aware of how we talk to ourselves inside our heads sometime, it would really shock us. So Allah is merciful. We have a framework of how to navigate life successfully. So if we fall down, we, we just need to look back uh, at the target and try to move forward. If we're in a time of ease, then we want to have gratitude to God because this is this is also a gift. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you're grateful, I will give you more. I will certainly give you more. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said uh, that, well, we, we see that he used to get up at night to the extent that his feet would swell. And it was said, it was said to him, why do you do this in the messenger of Allah uh, when you've been forgiven for your past and future wrong actions? And he said, 
should I not be a thankful servant? So again, this really goes back. It's intimately tied to an awareness of that this is a blessing from God. It's not that we're, God's not a vending, vending machine, basically. It's not, you do this particular prayer. It's like you put a money in a vending machine and you push the button and you cause something to happen. You can't make God do anything. But it, it seems to be intimately tied to our sincerity and our, need, and our realization of our need and our love for God, that God responds. Uh, and we want to use the blessings for what they're intended. So we're blessed. We want to have gratitude, but we also want to use the blessings for what they're intended for. So we can say, Alhamdulillah, we can show that we're, uh, that we're thankful, but if we use our hand to steal, that's not really having gratitude for the blessing of being able to use your hands. Or if we're looking at things that we know are not healthy for us to look at, this is really not using, this is not being thankful for the blessing is what it boils down to. You can pay lip service to it, but how it translates on, how you manifest this in your body is also a, a way that we show our gratitude. And we may lose our blessings. We can, we can very easily lose these blessings as a reminder of how blessed we are. If we're challenged by adversity, the Sheikh says, we, we need to try to endure this decree of God with patience. Muhammad, the prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him said, the servant will continue to be tried until they are left upon this earth without any sin. If God intends good for his servant, then he hastens the punishment for him in this world. If Allah intends evil for his servant, then he withholds punishment for his sins until he appears on the day of resurrection. And I know there's enough of us here that have seen enough decades to realize that sometimes we think something is terrible for us and then we see all the blessings like I wouldn't be here with you all if uh, my children two of my children didn't have a serious medical condition I would have never been in chaplaincy but in hindsight I can see that but in the moment inshallah we can be patient and trust that this this world is not an accident there is a merciful creator behind all this that's in control of all this and ultimately wants good and we can't always just focus on this life there is an afterlife as well and so sometimes we may look at our situation through a microscope just what's happening in this world and it could seem catastrophic but inshallah we can remember to try to toggle between these things and look with our heart through the telescope too through eternity that that Allah is telling us that he wants us to be in the garden and he's given us a way to try to uh, move toward that and this takes a lot of awareness and introspection to even realize what's going on inside yourself and we're we're living at such a fast pace it's really it's a challenge to do this so just like your eye sees, your mouth speaks, your brain thinks. So if we can, if we can in prayer or in sitting down and reflecting on the God's creation, uh, this can also let our, let our thoughts calm down a little bit. And inshallah, we can perceive this uh, ourselves. We don't have to trust somebody else about this through prayer and remembrance. Uh, hopefully, we can intuit some of this as well, have more conviction. And I wanted to share a story. I think last time I was with y'all, I shared a story from Mullah Nasruddin. I often try to work in a Mullah Nasruddin story. Uh, for those unfamiliar with Mullah Nasruddin, he's kind of this holy fool character uh, across the Muslim world. He's called Juha and some cultures or Nasruddin Hoja but they're, they're these stories and they're kind of a joke but they also have a very deep 
teachings as well. So uh, Nasruddin was talking to his neighbor one day and the neighbor was really lamenting uh, I'm, that he was having trouble fitting his large family into his very small house. He said that it was him, his wife, his three kids and his mother-in-law. They were all sharing this small house. And he, he said, you know, Nasruddin, you're a very wise person. What is your advice for me? So Nasruddin said, do you have any chickens? And the man said, I have 12 chickens. So Nasruddin said, put the chickens in the house. And the man said, Nasruddin, you don't, obviously you're not understanding what I'm telling you. And Nasruddin said, just try it. So the man was, he was at his wits end. He had tried everything. So he followed Nasruddin's advice. And he came back the next day and he said, Nasruddin, things are much worse. The chickens are in the house. You can't even walk. You have to be careful where you step. So Nasruddin said, okay, okay. So what we need to do now, take, take your donkey and bring it in the house. And the man really started to get more upset. But Nasruddin talked him into doing it. So the next day, the man came around. He looked like he had not slept all night. He, he said, now the house is way more crowded. There's my family, the chickens, the donkey. You can't hardly even turn around inside the house. And so Nasruddin said, okay, okay. Um, do you have any more animals in your yard? And the man said, well, we have a goat. So Nasruddin said, okay, put the goat in the house. The man was freaking out. But he, he, he was desperate. He was going to do anything to try to get help from Nasruddin. So Nasruddin talked him into it. Put the goat in the house. The next day, the man came back. He said, my family's upset. Everyone is threatening to leave. And this plan has made everyone totally miserable. So Nasruddin said, okay, go back. Take all of the animals outside of the house and come back tomorrow. So the man followed his advice. He went home, he took the animals out. The next day he came and he spoke to Nasruddin and he said, he was really happy. He was ecstatic and he was smiling. He said, Nasruddin, your plan, it worked. Like it was amazing with all the animals out of the house. It's so spacious, it's so beautiful. Everyone is joyous and happy and we're, and we're, you know, we're celebrating that we have so much space in our house. So I have not seen commentaries for these stories, but one thing that this tells me is as we, you know, I heard growing up, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. The same way with, as we mentioned, being in a state where we're things are difficult for us, for the believer, there's different ways to perceive this. We don't have to necessarily perceive this like we're being punished, God's beating us up. Often this is just an opportunity to remind us of how blessed that we were, that something, because we have countless blessings all the time that we're not really even aware of. So when something, we hit a, we hit a speed bump, Inshallah, we can look at that as an opportunity to increase in our gratitude to God. And inshallah, Allah makes it easy for us. And I ask that Allah make uh, it easy for all of you, that God forgives the believing men and women, that Allah blesses your community, and that God gently, ya Latif, that everything I pray for, I add ya Latif onto. You know, you can learn it, you can learn patience the hard way. We want Allah to teach us patience as gently as possible. So uh, inshallah, Allah blesses you all gently with a deeper patience, perseverance. And ya Allah, please bless us all with wholesome hearts, grateful tongues and obedient bodies. Do not let us forget you. Do not deny us loving you. Ya Allah, preserve and protect us. Be merciful with us. Increase our blessings and support us. Oh, you who have ability over all things. Thank you all again very much for inviting me back to spend time with y'all.